Too often, climate change is made to be about polar bears uh, off in the Arctic. Um, exotic impacts way off in the future, way off in some other part of the world, when in fact, climate change is impacting us now every day where we live in, 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 in very uh, tangible ways. Climate change is a problem now, it's a threat now, and it's a threat that we can act on now. The biggest concern for me is to ensure as a Prime Minister that there is continuity of uh, climate change uh, resources to keep on building new infrastructure because uh, for Samoa, and I speak for Samoa, uh, the villages, the prison infrastructure are almost all located on the coastline. And if uh, sea level rise uh, takes place, it means that people from the lower grounds will have to be moved to higher grounds. It means new roading, new electricity uh, connections, and new school infrastructure. Indigenous voices are essential. Um, in addressing climate change, especially in the South Pacific. We have a history of, of this ocean. Um, my ancestors travelled this ocean. So we have um, a traditional knowledge that goes beyond what science is about because we were the first scientists and the first explorers in the Pacific Ocean. And our viewpoint may take, may be different in the way that we have these particular connections as kaitiaki, or guardian, as um, manaakitanga, for caring. And it's not, they're not just words. They're a way of living and thinking and, the way, and it is the way in which we were birthed with this knowing. So if we are that, then we should be in the front of leading uh, around the care of this environment, around the care of the oceans. I was Minister for the Environment in New Zealand in 1990 when the first International Panel on Climate Change report came out. It became clear then, and it had been before, that we had a serious set of issues. Uh, I went to the Rio conference in 1992. I think that we dropped the ball. There was not sufficient political commitment to act, acting on this issue quickly and the longer you leave it the more difficult the costs of adjustment are the greater the human disruption and the bigger opportunity for chaos. Yes yeah, so one of the really big uncertainties is how the Antarctic ice sheets are going to respond to global warming by the end of the century and what that means for global sea level rise. It's, it's an area of huge focus at the moment um, and what we're learning is, in a nutshell, that we may have underestimated the potential melting of the Antarctic ice sheets, particularly, um, well, in the near term and pe perhaps the long term as well. So the science has moved very fast since the last IPCC report, and the latest ice sheet models are showing us that we may have 50 centimetres to a metre more sea level rise from the melting of the Antarctic ice sheets uh, this century, and that's a metre over and above the one metre already predicted. Now this is for the worst case scenario, this is if we don't reduce our emissions, um, but it's presenting a real problem now for how we adapt to sea level rise um, around the world. I am a customary, customary holder of knowledge of Māori medicine, Rungawa Wairākau. So what I'm seeing in the nahere where I go and harvest is the change in the plants, the, um, the way that the rungua, so I'm talking about the plants, is flowering twice, three times a year. Uh, the way that um, a lot of our plants is not going to cope with a drought, because along the coast here we're all wetlands. And um, this is going to make a difference in our customary um, knowledge of the plant, so we are watching a shift in what's happening in our environment 
you know, in my backyard where I go to harvest. We need a stronger set of international laws than we've got. Everything at international law depends on consensus. You can't force countries to sign up for treaties they don't want to sign up to. And yet, in a thing like climate change, you've got to have everyone singing from the same songbook. Uh, and you can't get that through international law. The other real difficulty with international law is that it lacks mechanisms for effective enforcement. Um, and, and really, in a thing where you require the cooperation of 193 nation states in order that they have policies domestically that are in conformity with the international norms, you've got an enormous challenge on your hands. We must peak our carbon emissions as soon as possible and reduce as fast as we can to zero net emissions before the end of the century. Um, so to do that, it, it is an enormous challenge and it will require a transformation of our economies and the way we do things. But a lot is already happening. If you look at certain states in the US, for example, you think the US has, has, has left the agreement. It hasn't. Trump has, but the United States is, is on track to do their part in, as part of the, the Paris commitment. Um, states like California, for example, are, are well on track with investment in renewables, in green technologies, um, and in reduction in carbon emissions. So I think there's lots of room for hope. And I think that's the message we must give our young people, um, that we can get there and there's still a chance. To a large extent, we control our own destiny. Um, if we continue to uh, burn fossil fuels, sort of business as usual, we don't enact uh, policies to uh, lower our carbon emissions, then uh, we will see uh, far more devastating storms, uh, worse droughts, uh, worse floods, um, and parts of the, the world will essentially become unlivable, uh, too warm for, for human civilization. Uh, so that is one possible future, but it doesn't have to be our future. Uh, we can take a more enlightened path where we ramp down our emissions over the next several years, where we transition away from fossil fuels towards renewable energy, and we can stabilize warming below uh, truly dangerous and irreversible levels. We need to transform our society take action quickly or we're going to be in serious trouble. First of all, we have to overcome our grief about what is happening. We have to heal from that grief and then we can, then can move out of that grief and into action. The Pacific nations need to work together and try and honour their contributions to climate uh, uh, change, uh, reduction, as we had uh, indicated in the Paris Agreement. Uh, to me, climate change is a question uh, of what sort of world do we want to leave behind for our children and grandchildren? Do we want to leave behind a degraded planet? Do we want them to look back um, at us and ask why we didn't take the steps necessary to avert this threat? Or do we want them to look back and, and say that um, we're so fortunate that people saw the problem uh, in time to avert catastrophic climate change? It's our choice.